Hey everyone, I'm Natalie Gallant and I'm the lead intern here at the Nash. And today I'm going to be taking you through all four of your Allstate Jazz Etudes, sharing some tips that I think would be helpful for you as you practice them for your upcoming auditions. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> etude, I want to talk about a couple of things just to help you out when you're practicing. First and foremost, making sure that we have the correct jazz articulation that we're utilizing because a lot of these pieces start on the and of one, not on the downbeat. If you're not setting up that swing feel from the very get-go, then the judge is not going to know where you are in the time. So establishing where those downbeats are is really iconic. Um, and then utilizing air support as you're going through these longer phrases so that way you can hit like that high E flat, um, that high E towards the end and making sure we're pushing through um, that all the whole notes and stuff like that. One of the things that I noticed or that I've heard um, from people practicing is that we tend to clip off the half notes and whole notes and then we anticipate into the next phrase. So make sure you're giving yourself enough time to play through all four full beats, and I would write in, you know, count cutoffs for yourself. Um, and then, when in doubt, just chunk it out. So, uh, like the last two lines, making sure we're taking those longer lines with the chromatic movement a little bit slower, and then piecing it all together so that way you can work all of it out. If you have one section that is tripping you up, don't play the whole thing. Work on that, and then build it into the rest of the etude. So for the etude 
two for the second etude, um, the ballad, the straight eighth ballad. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind when, obviously, once again, air support, when we have these longer lines that are going up or going down, you want to play through those phrases. You don't want to cut off. You don't want to run out, run out of air halfway through your phrase. And also, pencil in your breath marks. That's what I did, and it really helped me to be mindful of like where I need to breathe in order to complete a phrase, because you don't want to stop halfway through a sentence to take a breath. Um, Another thing to work on when you're practicing this is moving from that triplet feel to the eighth note feel. So just sitting with your metronome and just practicing the triple it, triple it, three and four and triple it, triple it, three and four and. And then just doing that over and over again, getting comfy with it and then working it into the song. And then uh, later on down the line, when you're coming out of the 16th notes, going into the triplet and then into the eighth note, chunk that out um, and make sure you're not rushing through the triplet. I noticed that towards the, like the first measure of the last line, when I was first playing, I rushed through that triplet. So that's gonna be a tendency that we're all gonna have. So make sure you're very intentional about setting up that eighth note, that the eighth note feel on the downbeat of beat three when we're getting to that, when we're, get, when we're getting to that phrase. Um, another th other couple of things to keep in mind because it is a ballad, so you know, giving it some shape and personality. Follow the contour of the lines with dynamics. Uh, if the if the line is ascending, so is your volume. If the line is descending, so is your volume. So and it, once again, air support, making sure you can push through. We have that high E up over that E seven after the the 16th note runs that are ascending. So making sure, so start small, have enough breath to be able to get through all of that phrase and to hit and nail that E. And then when we get to those half notes, make sure we're holding them for their full value. We don't wanna clip those off, let it ring out. This is your ballad, this is your time to shine. Um, and then you can add a little bit of, I, what I did is I added a little bit of vibrato. That also helps me, that reminds me to hold it out for its full value. Um, if you're not very familiar with vibrato, it's just like a slow ya, 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 ya sort of movement. So play around with that. If you get it, cool. If you don't, not a big deal. we have the relaxed samba. So with the straight eighth feel, you're going to want to feel the beats, the big beats on one and three. Uh, the tempo is at 90, half note equals 96, so you're already gonna be feeling it in that two feel. Um, another thing to keep in mind, the faster we play, especially when we're doing these Latin inspired grooves, is to keep it light, nice, light, and bouncy. So don't, you know, press your fingers super down, down super heavy on the saxophone. Use nice, light articulations. Don't use a lot of heavy articulations or, because that's just going to slow you down. Um, and then watch out for the B flats in this. So with the movements, I would highly recommend going in and marking out where you should use the side B flat and where you should use the bis B flat. Um, you're going to use predominantly just the side B flat. I have like one bis B flat that I wrote in over the E flat seven on the second line. But because the there's a lot of like chromatic movement or scale uh, scale movement, it's going to work a lot better for you as you're speeding it up to use that side B flat. Um, so remember, just side B flat is two and side on the on your right hand. And then when when you're playing it, make sure, what I did is I also penciled in some more cutoffs. So at the end of the first line, I gave myself a minus one. At the, at the end of the second line, I gave myself another minus one. Make sure that we're holding these whole notes and half notes all the way through to their completion. And that will also help make sure that you don't anticipate into the next phrase too soon. Because once again, this, um, 
this tune is starting on the and, we want to make sure that we're hitting those downbeats nice and solidly. So, ba ba da ba 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 da ba, right? So, hitting that beat three will ensure that the judge knows that you are playing in time and you know where you are in that. Uh, be careful of the incorrectly written and harmonic C flat in uh, the C minor seven chord. That is, it should be a B, but it threw me off, so I just had to circle it and look at it. Don't let it trip you up. And yeah, so keep doing all the things that I've been talking about for the other two etudes, you know, notes, breathing, dynamics, following the, the contour of the lines. Um, watch out for the ands of things. We, wanna, we have a tendency to rush through those or delay them, so make sure you're staying on top of that. And then something that helps me when, we ha when I have a lot of those offbeat rhythms is just penciling in the downbeats. So penciling in where one and three is or where two and four is, and that helps me kind of just um, root myself in the groove. etude, etude number four, that straight 16th funk tune. Um, a big thing we want to play in the style of, of every etude that, and like every genre that we're, we're being given for this all-state audition. So with this funk, when we have all these 16th notes, we want it to be articulate, we want it to be bouncy and light and percussive. So don't slur through these phrases. I don't want to hear ba da right? ba ba do da ba da ba do ba da 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 So light, bouncy, articulate. Um, when we get to measures three and six, so the last two, the last measures of the first and second line, we have um, a lot of syncopated, we have a syncopa syncopated melody there. So make sure, take us some time. What I did is I marked out the downbeats for me, so that way I knew where where one was or where two was, where a downbeat was, so that it helped me kind of figure out where the subdivision was happening. And then if you're finding yourself not able to like figure out how to do it, take it slow, take it out of context, and then just like count out the syncopation, right? So on measure three, um, it comes in on the E of one. So one E, and so one E and one, one E and two, and then just chunk it all together. Um, same thing on measure six, it has the same sort of rhythm. So if you can get measure three, you can get measure six. Um, another thing that I noticed was when we get to the last line where that D7 is, we have those two eighth notes with the staccato over them. Make sure those are nice and light, but don't rush through those. So take your time with the ba ba buddha, right? We don't want to ba ba buddha. So take your time with those. Um, and then when in doubt, chunk it out. If you're having trouble reading the syncopation on this, clap it out, count it out, maybe write it, at, write it in under your chart. That's what I've done. Um, make sure you're counting through your rests. So practicing with a metronome is a really great way of doing that, recording yourself, listening back, um, making sure we don't rush through some of like the quicker rests. I noticed I, what tripped me up was the first measure of the second line, there's that rest on beat three. So, and it's like kind of all squished together. So make sure you circle that and don't go over it like I did one time. Um, yeah, and then you should be good. <laughs> 